Overwhelming Vanilla. Welcome to whiskey.com where fine spirits meet. My name is Lüning, Horst Lüning. I'm the master taste of whiskey.com and today I have the real pleasure to taste a Craig and Moore from the special releases of Diageo, 25 years old and well, very rare and quite expensive, close to 400. And uh, well, the bottle I'm having here on my cask is a different bottle to what I'm tasting. So this one here, the bottle, is the special release from 2014, a predecessor of the actual bottle from 2016. And uh, the sample I got from the distributor, thank you very much for that, um, is from the 2016 bottling. So I'll have a look at the, the boxes really huge. Uh, an elegant, sophisticated space site with the most complex aroma of any malt. Well, those superlatives are mm, <laughs> not for my mother's son, no. Uh, but the Craig and Moore, especially the 12 years old, is one of the, well, the, mm, one of the most balanced whiskies I know of where the aroma, the taste and the aftertaste are not that intense, are not that kicking, but they are so equally distributed. They all tear in the same direction. So it is elegant and balanced, well, to the end. A wonderful drum, but please do not expect any uh, kicks, edges, intensities. It's just a smooth, elegant flow of whiskey. And for that, well, uh, I think is one of the most <laughs> balanced, but not the most balanced, no, of course not. So this is the older one, uh, the earlier one with 51.4 ABV. And uh, this one was bottled from casks. Uh, quite comparable to the new one. And now we have a look at the, uh, the leaflet, which came with the samples. And here's Craig Moore and oops, <laughs> this side was, was put in <laughs> the upside down. <laughs> oops, sorry. Um, beautifully structured and contemplative with a soft, sweet nose. <clears throat> this Craig and Moore is charming and welcoming throughout as it shows off the dry distillery character to the full. Compelling, intense palate gradually dies in a clever interplay between oak and malt. Long, warming finish. Superbly subtle with water. So this one has a higher ABV. It's 55.7. So be careful. Uh, to taste this one neat. Um, it might uh, paralyze your tasting buds on your tongue and uh, another whiskey behind this one might not taste as you would expect. Alcohol is a, well, <laughs> a poison, a toxic substance which paralyzes your tongue. Yeah, if you have too much of it. Limited edition, the sixth release of Craig and Moore in this series. So the, this bottle is the fifth. Um, from three cast types chosen for flavor alone, both refilled and rejuvenated American hogsheads. Hogsheads are of the size of approximately 250 liters, where you take four American standard barrels, each about 208 liters or 210 liters. And if you build three new casts out of those four American Standard barrels, then you, re, re, you are resulting in three bigger casts, which are called hogsheads. Hogsheads equals pig head. Um, and some of them are, well, 
are grinded out from the inside mechanically so that all the old charcoal is, is torn off and then they are uh, thermally activated again by toasting and by flaming and then you get a new cast where the uh, residual unchanged oak is activated again. Well, the saves are a little bit weaker, but today you're transporting the cast very carefully, so the thick staves are no longer needed. And those rejuvenated bring a lot more of vanilla and coconut and caramel, all which comes from the heat treatment. And ex bodega European oak buds. Ex bodega means from probably uh, Spanish sherry bodegas, and they used to use European wood, European oak, for a maturation of their sherries, which is very intense, gives a lot of tannins. Um, but the taste of people changed, and today, well, it is sad that 80% of the uh, bodega casts today are from American white oak because it's so a lot smoother. Yeah, and this European oak is no longer wanted. Um, so they use uh, ex bodega European oak cast, which will add a little bit of, well, spiciness, bitterness, coffee, cappuccino, espresso, whatever. 4,932 individual numbered bottles worldwide. And from the 2014, there had been 3,372 bottles on the market and there are still today some on the shelves. So the, the demand for those bottles are not that high. Well, as I said, Craig Moore is a whiskey without those edges and extreme aromas and uh, people are not going that much for it. Appearance, warm yellow gold with gold being. Mm. Well, this is that one and this is the new one and well, they quite fit. The new one appears a little lighter, but the diameter of the sample is less, so there's less uh, light absorbed by the liquid, so probably they have the same color. Warming and welcoming, softly fresh with gentle traces of beeswax, then orange zest or tinned mandarin oranges and fruit salad on a base of broad, soft <laughs> malt loaf. <laughs> I read meat loaf. Yeah. Okay. With time, a beautifully balancing spicy acidity appears, followed by ripe red apple. Much later, clean and dry with a little dried herb and a marzipan sweetness. Softer and approachable with a drop of water. Yeah, it's 55.7 which introduces a menthol note, floral and heady with hints of banana chew or fresh fruit salad with creme anglais. Creme anglais, no, sorry, no idea what that is. Then honey and butter on more meatloaf, <laughs> malt loaf, slightly nutty. Body, medium smooth palate, smooth texture, sweet start, sugary and intense. Slowly develop on beautiful notes of cocoa and licorice. Yeah. <clears throat> Finish long warming and cleansing. Growing charred like a burnt fruit on a panettone. Never heard that word. Round and drying. Later mint and finally herbal again. <clears throat> then a picture of the Stillman or the workforce of the distillery, founded in 1869. Um, first space-side distillery built to take advantage of railway transport. Yes, the railway was built along the Spey, uh, running where to? Uh, Dufftown, yeah, and then down uh, the Spey. Elgin has a station, yes, yeah. Mm, designed by the doyen of whiskey architects Charles Doig of Elgin. He is famous for those pagoda shaped kilns on the distilleries. Rebuilt in 1901, rated A1 by Blenders in 1925, closed 31 to 34 in the Great Depression, limited production during the World War II, 41 to 46, reconstructed 80, uh, 48. 
capacity doubled in 64, still converted to steam heating in 72. Yeah, in those times I think uh, the oil was found in the North Sea and therefore uh, the coal was no longer needed and <laughs> later on uh, in the late 70s the big strikes with the coal mines appeared and well they were lost. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so this is it with Craig and Moore. <clears throat> Arthur Scargill was the head of the strikes, I think. And wasn't it Heath, which was the Prime Minister then? Labour Prime Minister. And the Iron Lady had to clean up everything and did a lot of, well, mistakes. Fire in the streets, fighting. Yeah, and most of the distilleries uh, went on, on short production or even closed, so a lot of distilleries are no longer uh, available in that time. And ah, in a few, in few days I have to taste one of those distilleries, which were closed in, I think, 83. Yeah. Very expensive bottle showing up. Yeah. Overwhelming vanilla and caramel, which comes from the freshly burned rejuvenated casks and then a bunch of fruit, really a lot. Oh, wonderful. No idea if that's red apple, no. But a, a lot of fruitiness combining with the vanilla and caramel. old and an alcoholic note showing through. Well, 55.7, nearly all of the whiskies show this alcoholic note when they're that strong. So I have to dilute a little bit because there's, there are whiskies coming behind this one. I do not want to paralyze my tasting buds. Yeah. So it's a wonderful, rich, fruity, well, and malty whiskey combining uh, the fresh rejuvenated casks with the fruitiness of the distillery character. In the nose it's more sweet than dry. So mixed up, yeah. Lighter fruits Lost a little bit due to the water. Now it's coming more. More fruit. Tasting over to probably pineapple. Yeah. Oranges, tangerine. And then showing oakiness, dryness, not that spicy, but oakiness, going over to cocoa. And oranges and tangerine. Yeah, those bananas, no. Mm. The maltiness is there, but covered in all those other aromas. So the oakiness is nearly gone, but I have the idea that when I'm tasting it the second time, uh, this oakiness will build up. Yes, mm, now the spiciness coming through. Yeah, the oak is showing. The European oak. Dryness. Faint, faint bitterness from the old casks. Yeah. 
So this, this is a good, a complex one, but please do not expect a, a whiskey with a hefty edge, with an extreme taste, uh, whatever you expect in other whiskies, you will not find it in Craig and Moore. Everything is balanced, round, moves along with each other. So there is no, yeah, this is an elegant, not surprising, rewarding, settled, balanced whiskey. So the difference to all of those new whiskies people are looking for more kick, more intensity, more pitiness, more cast, more sherry, more this, more that. No, this one is elegant, full, rewarding. Yeah. Thank you very much for watching. Stay tuned. There's more to come as always. And feel free to share this video with the friends and Feel free to add your comments to this bottle in our whiskey database on whiskey.com.